So tonight is game six of the NBA Finals. Tonight is probably the most important finals game that we've had since, in my opinion, since game seven of the finals between the Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers when Cleveland came back from a 3-1 deficit a few years ago. This is easily, I think, a bigger game than that. Um, This is probably the biggest game in 10-plus years when you look at finals games, when you look at really just games in general in NBA history. There's like hundreds of reasons for this. I think the biggest reason is Milwaukee proved to everybody that they did not have to. Now, it's kind of hard to really say that because Giannis, I think, other than Giannis, Dante DiVincenzo, and maybe like one other guy, there's not a single rotation player on this team who was drafted by the Bucks. whether it's P.J. Tucker, whether it's Chris Middleton, whether it's Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, uh, Bobby Portis, Pat Connaughton. Um, and even when you bring up Dante DiVincenzo, he was, he has not played since the first round, I believe of this playoffs, but they proved that even though they didn't draft any of those big name guys, they were really the only teams to be believing in guys like Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday or Brooke Lopez, anyone of that nature. I mean, Chris Middleton was a, he was a Detroit Piston, right? I mean, how do you, if you're, that's a bigger video to make, but I mean, Chris Middleton was shipped out of Detroit because they didn't want him anymore. Drew Holiday was shipped out of New Orleans because they felt that he, they didn't want him anymore. I mean, they traded him for Eric Bledsoe. That's how that's how idiotic New Orleans is. Uh, Brooke Lopez was let go by a Lakers team who at the time was terrible, absolutely atrocious. Uh, Bobby Portis was on the Knicks last year. They didn't want him back. Pat Connaughton was a trailblazer before he became a buck. Uh, they didn't want him anymore. Jeff Teague. Like, there's, there's so many guys on this team who were no longer wanted by their previous team and were easily let go by that team to go to Milwaukee. Now, this isn't important just for Milwaukee. This is important for Phoenix as well. For Phoenix, they come back and win this series. This will be one of the best comeback wins in the finals ever, and this is going to have one of the biggest ramifications when you look at Hall of Fame status. Not really Hall of Fame status, but I guess just all-time status for some of these guys. You look at Chris Paul, who is getting into the later years of his career. If he ends up winning this finals, that is just an incredible mark for his career that he is able to probably be the best player on a championship team at the age of 36, I believe Chris Paul is. However old he is, he's, I mean, he's at least 35, 36. Devin Booker, a guy this young in his career who is already being compared to Kobe Bryant, he gets this ring now. He solidifies his status as one of the best players in the NBA. DeAndre Ayton, if he is able to continue to be a good player for the Suns team and get a ring on his finger, he solidifies his status as a viable number one pick in NBA history because of the fact that he won a title. And throughout DeAndre Ayton's career, he's always been compared to guys like Luka or Trey Young or Jaron Jackson Jr. or many other guys who have been a good player for other teams. But at this point, he's the guy who's made it farther than anyone else in that draft class. And Getting a ring on his finger would just make it an even better story for him and for that Suns franchise. The importance for both these franchises stems before even any of these guys put a Suns or Bucks jersey on. I don't think either of these franchises have... I think Phoenix has zero championships. Milwaukee hasn't won one in 50, close to 50 years since I think it's 72. Um, sometime in the 70s is when Milwaukee last won. So, like, for both franchises, just in their own historical rankings, this is a big game for them as well because if Milwaukee wins tonight, they hoist that first championship in 50-something years, close to 50 years, since the Big O and Kareem and many other guys were on that team leading them to a championship. And for Phoenix, like I said, it would be the first championship ever for that team, a team that's, you know, in their history been not very good, especially recently. The past five or six years, ever since Devin Booker was there, they have never been a above 500 team for a whole season. I can't remember the last time they were above 500 um, for a whole season. And it's just, it's, it's a great time to be a fan of either of these teams. And this is important for the NBA as well, because what both of these franchises have done is they have shown that you don't need to make a super team to win a finals. I understand that Chris Paul is a Hall of Famer. Devin Booker, if he continues on this trajectory, continues continues on this trajectory that he's on right now as a player, he's going to be looked at as one of the best shooting guards of all time. 
and I'm not even, I don't even think that that's a overstatement. Because when you look at the shooting guard position, we already know guys like Kobe, guys like Dwayne Wade, guys like, I mean, there's a lot of guys that you could name, Allen Iverson, many other guys that you could name. But if Devin Booker is able to put a ring on his finger this year, be one of the guys who has led this Phoenix Suns team from the depths of NBA hell. I mean, if you were a Suns fan for the past five or six years, you did not want to express the fact that you were a Suns fan. And now you're looking at an NBA Finals appearance and a possible championship. And if Devin Booker is the guy to lead this Suns team to that championship, I really think that even just continuing this trajectory of his career, he will be one of the best shooting guards of all time, historically. And the same could be said about DeAndre Ayton. I already brought up the fact that, you know, other people are just talking about how he was taken before Trey Young, or he was taken before Luka, or he was taken before any other guy in that draft that you might want to bring up. He puts a ring on his finger as well. He continues this upward trajectory like Devin Booker has, and he probably won't be one of the best centers of all time, but he will be considered someone who was a big center in today's NBA. He kind of was a throwback center. And he's going to be one of the guys, in my opinion, who could lead a comeback of a later, not later day, of a throwback center. A guy who's going to have his back to the basket, a guy who's going to get the ball down low, set screens, not going to be a smaller center. He's going to be a throwback center. And for the Bucs, honestly, a lot of the same points that I brought up about the Suns could be brought up for the Bucs as well. Guys like Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and Giannis have been with this team for I mean, Giannis and Chris Middleton, obviously, before Brooke Lopez. But those three guys are really the only three guys that have been there for a long-ish period of time. Not really long for Brooke Lopez, but for Chris Middleton and Giannis, they're the two guys that saw this rebuild through and through. They were, the, they were there when they were getting beat by, like, 50 points in the playoffs by the Chicago Bulls. They were there when Giannis won two MVPs. They were there when Chris Middleton, you know, was the steady second option, even though every single year it seemed like we killed him after the playoffs. They Both of those guys were there, and both of those guys did not really complain a lot, especially Chris Middleton. I don't think, I mean, if you played me a voice clip of Chris Middleton, I probably would not be able to tell you that it's Chris Middleton because you don't really hear Chris Middleton talk a whole lot. You don't really hear Giannis. I mean, I could tell you what Giannis sounds like, but you don't really hear Giannis out in in the stratosphere of other NBA superstars. You don't hear him like you hear LeBron. You don't hear him like you hear even Steph. You don't hear him like you hear... Other big names in the NBA. You just don't hear them that much. And for the Bucs, the, them winning this championship, a lot of the things I brought up with the Suns would be the same way for the Bucs. You know, there's the upper trajectories of Giannis, of Chris Middleton. Um, there's the guys that are needing a championship to solidify their status within the NBA. And there's guys who, they're just hungry for this championship. I think every single player on the court that's going to play tonight and even the guys that are on the bench are really, really wanting this NBA championship. And that's that's what's really made this finals one of the best ones that I've ever witnessed is the fact that every single guy that's going to play tonight and every single guy who's played in the playoffs for both of these teams really, really wants a championship because none of them have ever won one before. I think that is true, that not a single guy on the court tonight or even on the bench has ever won a championship. And that's probably the the best thing for all these guys is it's bringing out a level of competitive competitiveness that I don't think we really would have seen if we got Nets and Lakers or if we got Nets and Suns or if we got Nets and anybody else. If any other team other than the Bucks was in the finals right now, I don't think we would have gotten a better finals than this because both teams are playing so hard right now. Both teams are playing at an extremely high level and both teams really want this championship. That's going to be all for me. If you liked the video, make sure you leave a like button. If you didn't, make sure you leave a dislike button. I don't know how you leave a button. You, you hit the button. So hit the like, hit the dislike button. Any feedback from you at this point is much appreciated. Um, it's kind of weird right now with this YouTube thing because I want to make videos about sports, but one of the biggest sports in the world is about to end within the next few days. So... It's probably going to start being a lot more NFL videos. This could very well be the last NBA video that I make. So if you're one of my subscribers and you like NFL content, I promise you I will be coming out with it soon. Uh, we're probably going to be in the preseason within, I don't even know when the preseason starts, probably within a month or so. Um, and yeah, if you just like hearing my terrible voice for some reason, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.